All right, number 25. If the bases are the same, you can add the exponents. So we are doing x to the 1 3rd plus 1 5th power. OK, so if I want to do 1 3rd plus 1 5th, I need like denominators. Um, so this is where I multiply by 5 to make 15, and I will multiply by 3 to make 15. So that's going to give me 5 fifteenths plus 3 fifteenths, which uh, makes 8 fifteenths. OK, so we're just going to use that. Um, so that is going to give us x to the 8 fifteenths power. So that will just be our answer. Since the original problem starts off in exponent form, we will leave our final answer in exponent form. If the original, like looking down at number 30, if the original problem had been in uh, radical form, we would have rewritten the problem in radical form. For number 26, when you have a power raised to a power you multiply, so this is going to just be y to the 3 over 6 power. Now if anybody's having trouble understanding where I got that from, this is where I got that from. Uh, we're doing 3 times 1 over 6, but 3 is the same as 3 over 1. And when you multiply, you just do the numerator times numerator and denominator times denominator. So 3 times 1 is 3, 1 times 6 is 6. Um, now this will reduce. So this is going to give me y to the 1 half power. Since it started off in exponent form, we will just leave this in exponent form. Looking at number 27, notice that um, this is in radical form. So if it doesn't come out evenly, we would leave our answer in radical form. Um, this will come out evenly, though. See, the uh, 32, as we're looking at the fifth root, so we think about the, all the fifth powers, notice that 32 is on the list. So um, if this weren't the very first step, I would be writing this in pink right now. Right, because that can be simplified and brought out. Um, also, when we, the way we simplify variables is we divide the exponent by the root. And of course, 5 is divisible by 5, so this w could also be simplified. So I would have written this whole thing in pink, and everything would simplify and come out. So the fifth root of 32 is 2. So this 32 would become a 2. If I divide, 5 divided by 5 is 1, so that's just going to give me x. So this would simply be the answer for number 5. Uh, I'm sorry, for number 27. All right, number 28. The only thing really happening here is this uh, expression is in, it ha well, it has a negative exponent. And uh, we have learned well that anything that has a negative exponent is on the wrong side of the fraction line. So this is going to have to be brought up. And uh, so this is going to become x to the 5 over 4 power up here in the numerator. Um, because it's up here and there's nothing down here, we don't need a 1 or anything like that. So we will just leave it like this, and this is the final answer for number 28. All right, look at number 29. The bases are the same. So when you divide, you subtract the exponents. So this is going to be x to the 
3 sevenths minus 1 seventh power. Now 3 minus 1 is 2. So this will just make x to the 2 sevenths power. And uh, that's it for number 29. Not much to it. Taking a look at number 30, remember the way we simplify variables with uh, different kinds of roots is we divide the exponent by the root. So 12 and 4 are both divisible by 4. So we can just go straight to the final answer. So this will be x to the third power over y. And that's it. Divide. 12 divided by 4 is 3. 4 divided by 4 is 1. Okay, problems like number 31 are like having two problems in one. The x's are one little problem, and then the y's are, are sort of a separate problem. So looking at the x's for a minute, um, when you divide with variables, you subtract their exponents. And you can think of this bottom x as x to the 1 power. So as I go to divide the x's, I'm looking to subtract the exponent. So that's fifth, 5 uh, thirds minus 1. So when I do the x's, I'm thinking this, 5 over 3 minus 1. Similarly, when I go to do the y's, all right, and again, this is like y to the 1 power. So I'm wanting to subtract these exponents again. So this would be like y, and I want to do 1 minus negative 1 half. Now be careful. Uh, it's not 1 minus 1 half. That's what it would be if this were a positive 1 half, 1 minus 1 half. This is a negative 1 half. So I need to do 1 minus negative 1 half. So do you hear the double negative there? Let me just write it down very clearly. Um, what we're talking about is doing 1 minus negative 1 half. Do you remember what to do when you have a double negative like this? You add. So this is really 1 plus 1 half. Okay, so. So this is what we're doing. So just be careful. Anytime the, uh, the exponent in the denominator is negative, you're going to wind up adding. So 1 minus negative 1 half is going to wind up being 1 plus 1 half. Just watch out for that. So all we really have to do is uh, do this subtraction and do this addition, and, and we're done. So um, 5, 5 thirds minus 1. I'm going to do that over here. Okay, so 5 thirds minus 1. Well, 1 can be written as anything over itself. 1 is the same as 2 over 2, 3 over 3, 4 over 4, etc. But since this denominator is 3, it would be useful to rewrite this 1 as 3 over 3. Okay, so now what I have is 5 minus 3. So this will just be 2 over 3. Okay, so 5 thirds minus 1 is 2 thirds. So I'm going to have x to the 2 thirds power. Similarly, we already sort of started doing the 1 plus 1 half, okay, over here, so let's just continue. Again, 1 can be written as anything over itself. So since the denominator is 2, it would be useful to rewrite 1 as 2 over 2. So 2 over 2 plus 1 over 2, all right, because 2 divided by 2 is 1, so it, it does make sense. Um, so. 2 plus 1 is 3. So this will just make 3 over 2. Alright, so that is what we will have here with the y's. 
So we will have y to the 3 over 2 power. And uh, that's it. That's the final answer. Okay, when you multiply variables, you add their exponents. So this is like having y to the 1 power. So inside of the parentheses, we are looking at y to the 1 plus 1 fourth power. And outside, we have the 4 thirds power. So we just need to add these. So I will do that off to the side. OK, so 1 plus 1 fourth. So if we want to do 1 plus 1 fourth, again, I love working with the number 1, because I can rewrite that as anything over itself, like 2 over 2, 3 over 3, 4 over 4, etc. But since this denominator is 4, it will be most useful to rewrite this 1 as 4 over 4. All right, that immediately gives me a common denominator. So I have 4 over 4 plus 1 over 4. 4 plus 1 is 5. So this is 5 over 4. OK, so that is what is happening right here. So that is going to give me y to the 5 over 4 power um, raised to the still 4 over 3 power. OK, now, if you're like me, you will not be able to resist just canceling these 4s out. That is the quickest and best thing to do. The 4 that's low will cancel out the 4 that's high. So um, that will immediately take you to the final answer, which is y to the 5 over 3 power. Now, if you do not have my skills, then you would have multiplied these out first. Okay, instead of canceling, you would have done like this. Four times, uh, 5 times 4 is 20. 4 times 3 is 12. So you would have done 20 over 12, and then you would have had to reduce this. So you would have said, oh, look, these are both divisible by 4. And then uh, you would have gotten 5 over 3. But if you can just see that you can just cancel out the 4s and, and the 5 over 3 is left, that is obviously more efficient. All right, so that's the answer number 32. All right, on number 33, to handle this business, I would definitely rewrite these in exponent form. All right, well, maybe not yet. Changed my mind. Um, I'm noticing now that the roots are the same. So since the roots are the same, I can go ahead and multiply the stuff on the inside. So um, I'm not going to do exponent form just yet, maybe later. So on the inside of here, I will have the fourth root. Um, now, x to the third times x to the fifth is x to the eighth. OK, because when you multiply variables, you add those exponents. So that's going to be 8. Now, um, to simplify the radical, um, we divide the exponent by the root. So 8 divided by 4 is 2. So we can do that, and that's just going to make x squared squared. Uh, power to a power you multiply. So 2 times 2 is 4. So that's going to make x to the fourth power. So that will be the final answer. OK, so I didn't actually ever have to switch to exponent form after all. All righty then. Um, we're in exponent form. 
Again, I really, I'm going to look at this as three separate little problems. I've got my X's that I'm going to do. Okay, the X's are sort of doing their own thing. Um, I've got my Y sitting there. Okay, and the Y is going to be doing its own thing. And then I've got the Z. The Z's are doing their own thing. Okay, so it's really like three separate problems. The X's, the Y, and the Z's. So let's do them separately. And I'm going to stick to the color scheme I just set up. So for the X's, when you divide with variables, you subtract the exponents. So from the X's, I'm thinking X to the, and now I'm going to do 3 fourths minus 1 fourth. So I'm doing 3 fourths minus one fourth. Okay. Um, then I've got my y sitting there, so that's just going to be y. And then when I do the z's, I'm going to be doing. Uh, I'm subtracting these exponents again, so I'm doing z to the negative one third minus two thirds power. So I've got negative one third minus two thirds. Okay, so I'm doing my x's, my y is just going to kind of sit there, and I'm doing my z's. So let's see what happens. Let's go back to the x's. 3 fourths minus 1 fourth. The denominators are already the same, so I can just subtract. 3 minus 1 is 2. Okay, so that's going to be x to the 2 fourths power. All right, which obviously could simplify to 1 half, but I'll leave that for the next step just in case uh, there's something I can, else I can do with the other variables as well. Um, now with the z's, again the denominators are, are already the same. So I'm just going to deal with negative 1 minus 2. Okay, so in my mind I'm thinking, I'm focusing on this, negative 1 minus 2. Now negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. So this is going to give me z to the negative 3 over 3 power. OK, so I've got negative 3 over 3 power. Now, um, 2 over 4 is just 1 half. So as I reduce this, I've got x to the 1 half power. I've got my y, which has just been patiently sitting there the whole time, waiting for x and z to catch up. Um, now, for the z, I've got z to the negative 1 power, because 3 over 3 is 1. So, this is almost the final answer, except for we know that anything with a negative exponent is on the wrong side of the invisible fraction line, which is right here. So this z is going to drop down, and then that will be the final answer. So the final answer is going to be um, the final answer is going to be x to the one half power y over z. That's your final answer. All right, let's see what happens with number 35. The roots are the same, so I can go ahead and multiply these together. So in the numerator, that's going to give me the square root of x to the fourth power. Okay, because x times x to the third is x to the fourth power. And meanwhile, in the denominator, I still have the square root of 9x to the tenth power. Now, for square root, um, there's this invisible 2 that's there. It's understood. But I'm just highlighting it because, remember, for variables, um, we simplify by dividing. So it's like we're dividing 4 by 2. 
and where it will be dividing 10 by 2. So in the numerator, I'm going to now wind up with x squared, because I did 4 divided by 2. Now the 9, I don't divide. I actually do the square root. So the square root of 9 is 3. And uh, But when I do the square root of x to the 10th power, that's going to be x to the 5th power. Again, because I'm doing 10 divided by 2. Um, some kids uh, think it's a 1. It's not a 1. All right, square root. It's the second root. It's 2. OK, so we're almost done, but not quite. So now we just need to um, simplify these x's. So when all the dust clears, this 3 is still going to be sitting there on the bottom. But these two x's are going to cancel out two of these x's. And so that's going to leave x to the third power on the bottom. There's nothing left on the top because all of these x's canceled out. So that's just going to be 1. So the final answer here should be 1 over 3x to the fifth power. Now, if anybody had any trouble understanding what I just did, um, let me show it to you in slightly more detail. Um, just understand this. We had x squared over x to the fifth power. So x squared was x times x. x to the fifth power was x times x times x times x times x. And then we had the 3 sitting there the whole time. All right, so please understand what really happened was these two x's were going to cancel out two of these x's. And that was going to leave behind three x's. So that's why we had x to the third on the bottom and the three is just sitting there. OK, so that's it. All right, all of these roots are the same, so I can do the multiplication and division. So um, for now, I'm just going to leave this as the cube root of y to the sixth power. OK, so I'm focusing on the denominator here. If I go ahead and multiply these together, since they have the same root, then I'm going to have the cube root of 27. And this will make y to the 12th power because of y. It's like 1 plus 11 is 12. Um, now I can start to simplify. I might as well simplify all of this. Um, because to simplify y to the 6th power, I need to divide by this 3. So that is going to give me y squared. The cube root of 27 is 3. Okay, the cube root of 27 is 3. Um, I don't just divide. It's not a 9. Uh, but the 12, I do divide by the 3 once again. So that's going to be y to the 4th power. So all that's left now is to simplify these y's. Now remember, um, just like on the last problem, it's sort of like this. y squared is like y, y. y to the fourth power is like y, 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 y. And meanwhile, we have this 3 sitting here. These two y's are going to cancel out two of these y's. So that's going to leave y squared on the bottom with this 3. So that's why the final answer is going to be 1 over 3y squared. All right, that's it for number 36. So for number 37, these radicals are the same. So I can go ahead and multiply this stuff together. So I will have the square root of, let's see, I've got the 2. There are no x's over here, so I'll just bring down my 1x. Now my y's, y times y to the third power is y to the fourth power. And z times z to the fourth power is z to the fifth power. Now this is square root. So um, there's an, it's understood 2 right here in terms of um, these exponents. I'm really wanting to divide by 2. So um, I'm going to split things up and simplify as much as I can. 
So here's what we do. There's nothing I can do with that 2. 2 cannot be split up, and 2 is not a perfect square. So that 2 is just going to have to sit there. Same thing with the x. All right, It's like x to the 1 power. There's no way to make that divisible by 2. So I'm just going to leave that alone. y to the 4th power. 4 is already divisible by 2. So all I'm going to do is write it in pink to remind me that this is going to be simplified and brought outside the radical in a minute. Now z to the fifth power, um, 5 is not divisible by 2, but I can split it up because um, 4 is the first number under 5 that is divisible by 2. So I can take this z to the fifth power and break it up as z to the fourth power and z. So everything here in pink is going to simplify and come out. Everything here in blue is going to stay in. All right, so remember that we are dividing by this invisible 2. y to the fourth power is going to become y squared. z to the fourth power is going to simplify to z squared on the outside of the radical. Now everything shown here in blue is going to be still under the radical. So I will have 2xz. All right, and that is the end of number 37. Number 38. These roots are the same, so I can go ahead and multiply this stuff together. So this is going to give me fifth root of um, 8 times 6 is 48. All right, x times x to the sixth power is x to the seventh power. And then I have my y to the seventh power. All right, I need to do the fifth root if possible. Um, I don't think there's anything I can do with the 48. Normally I would look here in the fifth power column looking for things that could divide evenly into 48. But 32 does not divide into 48. And that's the only thing smaller than 48. So we're stuck with 48. Um, so let me begin the process of finding and creating anything that will simplify. So there's nothing I can do with the 48, so that's just going to sit there blue. Now, x to the seventh power. When I am taking the fifth root of a variable, I need the exponent to be divisible by 5. 7 is not divisible by 5, but I can rewrite x to the seventh power as x to the fifth power, all right, because that is divisible by 5, with two extra x's left over, so x squared. All right, together they make the original 7, so I haven't really changed anything. And I do the exact same thing with the y's. y to the 7th power can be written as y to the 5th power times y squared. Okay, now everything in pink is going to simplify and come outside of the radical. So, to simplify these variables, I divide. 5 divided by 5 is 1, so this is just going to be x, y. All right, now everything in blue is going to stay under the radical just like it is. So I'm going to have the fifth root of 48, x squared, y squared. And that's my final answer for number 38. Okay, fourth root. Let's begin the process of breaking this down. <coughs> um, fourth root, nothing I can do with 10, all right? 10 is less than 16, and that's the first thing on the list. So I'm stuck with a 10, put it in blue. X to the fifth power. For these variables, I, to take the fourth root, I need these exponents to be divisible by 4. 5 is not divisible by 4, but you know what is. 
if I wrote this as x to the fourth power so that it would be divisible by four, I can do that um, as long as I recognize there's an extra x. So x to the fifth power can be rewritten as x to the fourth power and x. Together they make five. I did that so that um, the pink part can be simplified by dividing by four. Now y to the eighth power is good just the way it is. Eight is already divisible by four. So I will leave this as y to the eighth power. Z is not good. Um, okay, because z 10 is not divisible by four. So I need to rewrite this. Now, what is the first number less than 10 that is divisible by four? Eight. Um, so I can rewrite this as z to the eighth power. How many z's are left over? All right, z squared. All right, together, z to the eighth and z squared makes z to the tenth. So now I'm all ready. Um, if I were you, I would find a way to use colors sort of the way I do. Even if it's just pencil and pen, and you have a system where one of those is always going to be the thing that simplifies, um, color coding this makes it much more clear and you're less likely to make a mistake. Anyway, everything here in pink is going to simplify and come out of the radical. So I am dividing by this 4. So 4 divided by 4 is 1, so that'll just be x. 8 divided by 4 is 2, so that'll be y squared. And for the same reason, I will have z squared. So that takes care of all the pink stuff. Now everything shown here in blue is going to be stuck under the radical just like it, it is. So I will have the fourth root of 10xz squared. All right, see how the colors make it easy? Be like me. All right, while you're at it, be helpful, not hurtful. Okay, number 40. Okay, we are down to the last problem. in the longest homework assignment I've ever given. Let's see, so we need the square root of, now um, I like the 36. All right, I'm, in, I'm gonna split this up a little bit, but the I'm not gonna split up 36. The 36 is already a perfect square, all right? We're talking about second root, 36 is obviously on the list. I will simply write the 36 in pink x to the third power. All right, there's an invisible two here that I'm trying to work with. So I need this to be divisible by two. It is not. But I can separate it and I can write x to the third power as x squared times one extra x. Now everything shown here in pink can simplify and come out. Square root of 36 is six. And the square root of x squared is x, because I'm dividing 2 by the invisible 2. So that takes care of the pink stuff. Now, everything shown here in blue is just going to still be there. So I will have the square root of x. And this will be the final answer for number 40.